Chapter 1. The Marginalist's Assault on Classical Political Economy An Assessment and Counterattack Either the labor theory of value or, secondarily, some other form of cost theory of value was common to the classical school of political economy in England. It was stated by Adam Smith in ambiguous form, the real price of everything, what everything really costs, to the man who wants to acquire it, is the toil and trouble of acquiring it. Labor was the first price, the original, purchase money, that was paid for all things. In the same passage, though, he spoke of the value of a commodity in one's possession as consisting of the quantity of labor which he commanded. And at other times, he seemed to make the market price of labor the source of its effects on exchange value. The most clear-cut and effective statement of the labor theory was by David Ricardo. In Principles of Political Economy and Taxation, the value of a commodity, or the quantity of any other commodity for which it will exchange, depends on the, negative, the relative quantity of labor, which is necessary for its production, and not as the greater or less compensation which is paid for that labor. In so defining the doctrine, Ricardo eliminated the confusion between labor as the source of exchange value and wages as a component of price. From this principle, it's, it followed that income occurring to the owners of land and capital was a deduction from this exchange value created by labor, and that wa wages varied inversely with profit. If the corn is to be divided between the farmer and the laborer, the larger the production proportion, that is, given to the latter, the less will remain for the former. So if cloth or cotton goods be divided between the workman and his employer, the larger the proportion given to the former, the less remains for the latter. It was only natural that the emerging socialist movement should seize on the political implications of this conclusion. The school of of so-called Ricardian socialists in England took just an inspiration. The greatest of them, Thomas Hodgkin, wrote in Labor Defended Against the Claims of Capital, Wages vary inversely as profits or wages rise when the profits fall, and profits rise when wages fall, and it is therefore profits, or the capitalists' share of the national produce which is opposed to wages or the share of the laborer. Marx, in turn, was inspired by the Ricardian socialist interpretation of the classical political economy, as well as by Proudhon. According to Engels, modern socialism was a direct outgrowth of the insight of the bagacious political economy. On the nature of wages, rent, and profit, Insofar as modern socialism, no matter of what tendency starts out from bagacious political economy, it almost without exception takes up the Ricardian theory of value. The two propositions which Ricardo proclaimed in 1817, right at the beginning of his principles, one, that the value of any commodity is purely and solely determined by the quantity of labor required for its production, and two, that the product of the entire social labor is divided among the three classes, landowner, rent, capitalists, profit, and workers, wages. These two propositions had ever since 1821 been utilized in England for the socialist conclusions, and in part with such pointedness, pointedness and resolution that this literature, which had then almost been forgotten, and was to a large extent only rediscovered by Marx, remained surpassed until the appearance of capital. The actual extent to which Marx's theory of value is straightforward, outgrowth of Ricardo, and to which it was a pre-existing Hegelian philosophy, with Ricardian elements grafted on, is an issue of in dispute. But for the present purpose, we will treat Marx's theory of value 
as relevant to our study to the extent that it is amiable to a Ricardian approach.